Hello students, I'm back again with a new topic called Integral Transforms. And in Integral Transforms, I'll be dealing with Laplace Transforms today. So, this chapter, you can find it in BSE 6 Sem Physics Paper 2 textbook of Rami Chinnama University, Belgaum. Integral Transforms is the first unit of Physics Paper 2 textbook of Rani Chanama University, Vagavi. And in Integral Transforms, we have two different topics. One is the Fourier Transforms and the other is Laplace Transforms. Fourier Transforms, we have studied in 4th sem Maths Paper 2. And Laplace Transforms, we are studying it in 6th sem Maths Paper 2. So that means you all have a little bit of knowledge of these two topics that is the Fourier transforms and the Laplace transforms. But in this chapter, we're trying to give a little bit of physics angle to it. All right. So what is this Laplace transform or who found out this Laplace transform method and why it was introduced? Laplace transform method was named after the founder the founder of this method, a French astronomer and mathematician, his name was Pierre Simon Marcus D. Laplace. So he was the founder of this method. And he gave this method to solve the differential equations without giving the initial conditions, without finding the general solution of the differential equation. Alright, so this method was trying to make the solving of differential equation a simpler method. Now what is Laplace transform? Laplace transform definition. is a real function of time defined for all positive values of t then Laplace transform of this function f of t is denoted by L f of t. The Laplace transform is denoted by the capital letter L. So Laplace transform of f of t it is defined as 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt. f of t is a function of t for all positive value of t. So this can also be written as capital F of s or it can also be written as small f bar of s. So Laplace transform of f of t I can also denote it by capital F of s and f bar of s. Anything is Okay, the definition says it is the integral of exponential of e raised to minus st f of t dt. So e raised to minus st f of t dt, 0 to infinity, is the main definition of Laplace transform of f of t. So this is the definition of Laplace transform of f of t. Now, if I want to find out the value of f of t, it will be nothing but the inverse of f of s or f bar of s. It's similar to saying, suppose, sine theta is equal to 2. So, theta is equal to sine inverse of 2. Alright? So, that is how I'm going to also write this function. So Laplace transform of f of t is equal to f of s, then f of t is equal to Laplace inverse of f of s. So that is how I am going to define Laplace transform and the inverse of Laplace transform. Now before heading to the various problems of Laplace transforms, we are going to mention some basic properties of Laplace transforms. Now why we have to mention these basic properties of Laplace transforms is that we can use these properties in solving our equations. So the first property 
the first property. I'll be first telling you the sentence and I will be then writing the mathematical part of that particular sentence. So property one, it says the Laplace transform of the sum or difference of time functions is equal to the sum or difference of Laplace transforms of the individual time functions. Difficult to understand, right? Okay, so let's write it in a mathematical way so you will know how simple this property is. So let me write it in the mathematical part. The mathematical part says Laplace transform of f1 of t plus or minus f2 of t plus or minus f3 of t and so on is equal to Laplace transform of f1 of t plus or minus Laplace transform of f2 of t plus or minus Laplace transform of f3 of t and so on. Now did you get the property? What does the property say? The Laplace transform of the sum or difference of the functions of time is equal to the Laplace trans, the sum or difference of the individual Laplace transforms of the functions. Is it clear? So now we have to prove this property. Now whenever we have to prove something, when, when we have an equation and we have to prove it, the first thing what we do is we are taking the LHS, simplifying it and bringing it equal to RHS. That is our method. And then we are going to say LHS equals to RHS does prove. Right? So now here also we are going to do the same thing. But every time we are going to keep in mind one particular thing. And that is the definition of Laplace transform. So we have to keep in our mind the definition of Laplace transform. So let's start proving this. So what is our LHS? This is our LHS. Laplace transform of f1 of t plus or minus f2 of t plus or minus f3 of t plus or minus so on. So this is our LHS. Now, as I told you, we begin with the definition. And what is the definition? Laplace transform of f of t is equals to 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt. So this is the definition. So according to these, when we compare these two expressions, we see that this f of t is equal to this complete thing. Right? So, in, wherever we have this f of t, we are going to write this particular thing. That is f1 of t plus or minus f2 of t plus or minus f3 of t and so on. So, let's write that. So, LHS will be equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus st into bracket. What is our f of t? f1 of t plus or minus f2 of t plus or minus f3 of t plus or minus and so on dt. Right? Now the next step is we have to multiply e raised to minus st dt inside the bracket. So what do we get here? 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f1 of t dt plus e raised to minus st into f2 of t dt. So it is going to be minus st f2 of t dt plus or minus so on. And now what? Next what? Whenever we have the integral sign and we have a sum or difference, we separate the components. So it's like 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f1 of t dt plus or minus 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f2 of t dt plus or minus so on. So what is this? Laplace transform of 
F1 of T. This is Laplace transform of F2 of T. So, did we get our RHS now? Laplace transform of F1 of T plus or minus Laplace transform of F2 of T plus or minus so on. That is equal to our RHS this proved. Right? So, Laplace transform of the sum or difference of the functions is equal to the sum or difference of the Laplace transform of the functions. Alright? So, this is our first property. Come to the second property. property. The second property states that the Laplace transform of a constant and the function of time is equal to the constant and the Laplace of the function of time. Again confused? Let's write the mathematical equation. It says Laplace transform of constant and the function of time is equal to constant and the Laplace transform of the function of time. So this is our second property. Simple. So now what is our next step? Prove it. So let's prove it. And how are we going to prove it? By proving that LHS equal to RHS. And what is our first step? The definition of Laplace transform. That is 0 to infinity, e raised to minus st, ft dt. Right? So now, what is our f of t here? It is nothing but a of f of t. So wherever we have f of t, we are writing a of f of t. So Laplace transform of a of f of t is equal to 0 to infinity e raised to minus st a f of t dt. Now integrate this expression. When we integrate this expression, we see that this a is a constant, whereas others are variables. So we remove the constant outside the integration. So a into 0 to infinity e raised to minus st f of t dt. So what did we get here back again? e raised to minus st f of t dt that is nothing but the definition of Laplace transform. So this is equal to a into Laplace transform of f of t. So this is again our RHS. Right? Simple. Let's move on to the third property. The third property. The third property is also called as a linear property. This property is a combination of the first as well as the second property. That is, we are going to add all the functions of time and also we are going to multiply the constants to the function of the times. So that means, if f1 of s and f2 of s or I can say the Laplace transform of f of t and Laplace transform of f2 of t, right? In the beginning, as I told you, the Laplace transform, I can also write it as capital F of S. So that means F1 of S is a function of F1 of T. F2 of S is the Laplace transform of F2 of T. <coughs> if these are the Laplace transform of F1 of T and F2 of T respectively, then Laplace transform of Laplace transform of a1 f1 of t plus a2 f2 of t is equal to a1 
Laplace transform of f1 of t plus a2 Laplace transform of f2 of t. <coughs> right? So can you see that this is a combination of both the first and the second property. Now again, we have to prove this. And to prove this, we are going to write the first step that is the definition. So now, instead of f of t, what we have a1 f of t plus a2 f2 of t. So this is going to be 0 to infinity e raised to minus st a1 f1 of t plus a2 f2 of t dt. What will be the next step? Get it inside the bracket. So 0 to infinity e raised to minus st and dt we have. So we have e raised to minus st a1 f1 of t dt plus e raised to minus st a2 f2 of t dt. And the next step, we have the integration sign and we have the sum of two components. So we are going to separate them. 0 to infinity, e raised to minus st, a1, f1 of t, dt, plus 0 to infinity, e raised to minus st, a2, f2 of t, dt. Again, a1 and a2 are constants. So, a1, 0 to infinity, e raised to minus st, f1 of t, dt, plus a2, 0 to infinity, e raised to minus st, f of t, dt. So, what is this now? It is a1, Laplace transform of f1 of t, plus a2, Laplace transform of f2 of t. T, which is nothing but RHS. So, we're back again from the LHS to the RHS. In all these properties, we have followed the same method. The first step is take the LHS. Secondly, define the Laplace transform and substitute the value of f of t and go on simplifying to get RHS. I hope you have understood it till here. Thank you.